I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Helena York, the star of The Other Two, on which she plays uh, uh, Brooke Dubeck on uh, on Max. Uh, first question I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, you've been playing Brooke now for three seasons, and what I'm curious is, to, is what have you discovered with Brooke in this third season that you hadn't seen with this character before? Um insecurity and like i think that she's displaying her truest deepest darkest insecurity in this season she's kind of gone about things confidently blindly um and i think this season she's gets existential in a way and goes down a path that she she can't get out of and what i love about this season is was the opportunity to give a 360 performance there's a lot of hard, insane comedy, a lot of physical comedy, subtle comedy, but then also really grounded um, uh, moments that were hard. And um, yeah, I think I was I'm not, I don't know that I was surprised. I'm never surprised by Chris and Sarah because I, I would be more surprised if I was not surprised. <laughs> the creators of the show, um, I think they have, they're incredibly deft in their writing and their uh, storytelling. So it's just always um, such a joy to see where they've taken characters um season by season um you know the i think what was something that's very underappreciated about the show is the titles of the episodes uh which i think <laughs> are which i think also when you view them in context the episode it's also sometimes funny to be like oh they're just highlighting this one little thing and the, but the episode is really about something else but I'm wondering what your reaction was when you saw that the title of one of the episodes was literally quote Brook and we are not, are not joking, joking goes to space. <laughs> I read the title before reading the episode and I was like, oh my God. Um, I often read when we read the seasons, we get the seasons, they kind of like hoard them and then they send us 10 episodes to read. And um, you obviously open a script and it says the title and you're like, uh, and I more than anything this season, we were thrown into such bizarre scenarios i spent an episode invisible at a party there's some like really out there concepts that we touch on not concepts but themes and um yeah and i i think more than anything i'm like damn you guys really have faith in me to deliver this in a way that feels real <laughs> um even though i'm gonna be in a space shuttle with a guy with you know lip prosthetic um, so, you know, that's my reaction more than anything is I'm like, where is this going? I think what's really interesting about the episode titles is that in season one, I don't know if you remember this, every episode was chase does chase. whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and then the season two is all Pat does whatever. And then this season, it's like more focus on the two of them that have this success that they're thriving technically, um, but can't really see that kind of their brains are too broken. Um, to know that they're doing well and they need to go on this like these insane quests <laughs> um d d was it was it fun to be able to be play to to play someone who's been to space twice and is just like i'm over it yeah i mean <laughs> i was just so delighted by that because obviously that's a comment on real life people and situations that are just so outrageous and to send brooke to space with these ding dongs um yeah, I think she's just like these fucking idiots. I think it's how we all feel. <laughs> so it's easy to play because it is what we feel, but it's played with an actor going to space. Um, yeah. Um, you know, so uh, talking about again this third season, um, th th so much looks of this just looks like it was uh, as it could be incredibly complicated to shoot. It looked like it was also incredibly fun to shoot, and I'm. Curious as to what was your favorite thing to shoot for this show, for the show's third season? Oh my god, um, my favorite thing to shoot. Um, I I I get really amazed by certain things. So favorite things to shoot would be like I thought that Applebee's set was absolutely batshit. I mean, it was like uh, entering a different space and time. I mean, that was on a soundstage and it was a fake Applebee's, but it felt like Applebee's for the three four days we were there. Um. And then I like shooting small things that maybe people wouldn't think of. Like I liked shooting, going to Streeter's house, needing somewhere else to stay and walking into that pink room and being told this is, oh, you chose Carrie's room. That was really fun to shoot. I love working with Kim Reno. 
Um, I really loved the trip across America, driving the armpit across the country with Ken. As you said, you're jealous that Molly shared a bed with him, but he's just like one of the most remarkable comedians out there. So to have had that time with him and that, that silliness, I really enjoyed that. Um, I also always enjoy literally anything I do with Drew. I don't know if people pick up on this, but most of our scenes are phone calls. And so when we end up on set together, it's, um, it's the shorthand is just so nice and we just get each other now. It feels like we're real siblings, but specifically like, you know, and I always love when we're in Manhattan because there's just something about shooting on a New York street. And especially now people know and love the show and we get stopped sometimes and which is sweet. I always say that I love that. And I do. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it was just occurring to me that we haven't really seen Brooke and Carrie together as much. And do you think maybe that the fact that they're not around each other as much, maybe contributing to them, like they're not calling each other out on maybe what needs to be called out. You think that yeah, maybe- they're also so self-involved. I think they've become so into themselves that they can't see what's going on with the other. And so maybe they're not paying as close of attention and that's where this season gets like, re- they get really out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, in addition to all the other uh, uh, fun things that you've gotten to do this season, um, uh getting to say the line how much fun was it to say the line simulu simulu is such a good daddy yeah i mean (laughs) it was also really funny because they discovered when he came on that he was younger than me and that was one of my favorite moments um i'm you know i'm actually younger than you and brooke's face after that (laughs) um (laughs) Again, I think I told you, I can't remember if I told you when we were taping or not, just such a lovely man. We were so lucky he came on to do this and, you know, he's such a big star and that was so great. But yeah, I loved that. Um, You know, um, like uh, Molly, uh, you get a chance to do uh, some acting in very heavy prosthetics. And I am curious as what it, what it, what it was like, you know, getting into that and what it was like, you know, having to work, you know, with those, with, with that on you for, I don't know how long you were using that, but it also looked like for quite a bit of it, you were in uh, an armoire or a closet, not a closet, but like an armoire or something. And it, that, that just must've been like crazy to shoot. So episode nine takes place. It's in this apartment building. That's on 20, I want to say six, seventh, I think it's 26th street. Um, you know, right behind the Whole Foods there between anyways, and this lovely co-op let us shoot there. And I spent basically a week climbing in and out of a window. (laughs) I think I came climbed in and out of that window, like over a hundred times. Um, and everybody in that co-op like knew us at a certain point, the neighbors were saying hi to us while we were sitting outside. Um, and it was in a one, one apartment that they like redressed to be a different apartment for every scene that you saw it in. So we would shoot like everything in the one apartment and then they would switch it over and then that apartment. And then I got lit on fire and that was like a whole thing. And then like the fire marshal was on set and Louisa Karen, who does the makeup did, um, he actually built me a neck. I did a show called Quantico and he built me a prosthetic neck. This was five years ago, maybe now where I got my head chopped off. Like we had these things and it was like, ah, ah, and like blood was splurting and they waited until the end of the day. And like Louis was this, and I had to go to 30 rock to get this prosthetic build for me. I was like, Oh my God, this is so amazing. It like the cone heads in his room. I was like, this is crazy. And I had to like sit in a, like a, like a plaster cast. And now they do like a digital scan of your face to build the prosthetic. Cause he has all these crazy stories about people getting like stuck in plaster. Um, anyways. And yeah, he made me this amazing prosthetic and I, I did it many, many days for many, many hours. And you're like, you know, feeding taco through your like mouth gate mouth hole. Cause like the lips are covered and you know, just trying to like drink smoothies, but that not being enough. And then they're constantly like coming up and like fixing your lips um it was crazy it was it was crazy it was hard and they were long days but it was so worth it and so insanely silly and as an actor I just do not know when I'll ever get to do that again I don't know 
And that's, what's the best thing about this show is that it's so gratifying to be on it, to have this legend build you an old lady prosthetic so you can sneak in and out of your boyfriend's apartment and then light it on fire. You know, I don't know. It's so big and so fantastical and so funny that, you know, it's fantastic. It's so, (laughs) and the costume, it's just so stupid. (laughs) I mean, like, what was it like when you saw yourself in the mirror uh, for the first time? With well, Elvis? your face like doesn't open your phone, so for like <laughs> hours you're just used to being like, oh, oh, right, and like FaceTiming your husband, and it's the it's like, bro, ah! um, you know, it's it's a lot. Like I went there. There's a dig in right there on um on Seventh Avenue, and I would I like I was like, well, I'm starving, so I went to the dig in as an old lady. Um, and just, but you're walking like a young person, but look fully old. I mean, I was wearing like a sweater with like a little necklace and a blouse. I had a shawl and like bad elastic weight khakis. And you're just like, (laughs) walking to the dig in and like ordering a bowl. Um, but it's New York. So nobody really looks at you sideways. They're like, I guess this is an old woman. (laughs) Only in New York. <laughs> or a young person wearing makeup and I'm not going to question it. <laughs> um, you know, you talked a lot about, uh, about uh, you know, working with, uh, be, being uh, having Drew as a scene partner, having Ken as a scene partner. But I'm curious as to how much fun is uh, Josh Segarra as a scene partner? Because I love how they, how he's become more, uh, you know, a, a really central part of this cast. Yeah. Josh Segarra is a wonderful actor and we've known each other for 15 years or something. Really? Yes. We came up together in New York theater. So we were like, you know, going out to Bourbon street on 46th street after shows when that's what we were doing in the early aughts or whatever. Um, and so just to have like watched his career, he watched my, and then to come together for this for season one, and then to watch the relationship and the character grow and change, which they've done for him because he's so wonderful and he has such a way and you know you really it's so easy to root for him because he is such a good guy and he plays such a good guy on the show that it's you know um and he's just he's he comes from theater he's so on it and I keep saying it's like playing catch with this person that you just like know is right there with you um it's so gratifying and days with him are so easy and you know, it makes the chemistry feel easy. And I'm, I'm just so glad he was around so much this year, this season. Well, uh, Brooke, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best over uh, this ne- over this upcoming season. And to all of our viewers, please like, subscribe, share, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com to keep updating your Emmy predictions in advance of nominations on July 12th. Thanks so much, Brooke. Helena, sorry. I I was going to allow it, Charlie. I was like, I am her and she is me.